If you're into collecting action figures at around the 6 inch scale, you need to get some action figure stands at some point. And while this looks cool and it gives you plenty of options for posing and photography if you're into that kind of stuff, they often come in bags like this with zero instruction, so I'm going to show you exactly how to put one of these things together. I know you want to get right to how to put these things together, but I want to say one more thing, and that is there are so many different action figure stands out there. Yours may not be exactly similar to this one, but you can maybe get the idea and maybe put it together if you don't have the instructions. There's only very few things you're going to need for one of these things, and of course it includes the kit itself. It might also include a tiny screwdriver, but you might just want to have an extra one of these on hand in case you lose it. And the last thing that you're going to need is a clippers or an X-Acto knife or something that's going to remove the pieces from the sprues. You open up your bag of all of your stand parts. You're going to get a little bag of screws. You're going to get a stand where it all fits together, and you're going to get one of these sprue trees. Now, this is the part that we're going to want to be concerned with the most because it really depends on where you clip these, whether or not you're going to have a working stand. And so first I like to start at the edges of the outside and work my way inward. So this dog bone right here is part of our stand. So we wanna just very carefully clip that right there. And then we're going to wanna clip it free of the tree. There we go. And if you have to apply a lot of pressure, you're probably not cutting in the right spot. So just double check that. You want to be extremely picky you can look at the ends of where you cut and you can either file them or use your exacto knife or clippers and just kind of shear it down a little closer so that there's not a rough piece of plastic sticking out and because i'm that kind of person i'm going to do that just a tiny little bit like i said i'm just going to work my way around and free these pieces now when you're handling it some of them might just pop off and that's okay that means that you have to do less work which that's not a bad thing now, some of the parts you want to be careful for are these little joints right here. Again, they're easy to kind of confuse with the rest of the sprue tree here, but I'm going to just clip them ever so slightly. In fact, I just twisted that one off. That's a better option sometimes than I can go back in and clean it up. And it seems like I already had a part fall off here, so I'm going to have to look on the ground to find that. But it is the matching part for this. This is the piece that goes around the waist so that I can give them some kind of jump. I can give them a lift pose. The hunt begins. I've got all of my pieces here and I like to start from the base up. Just find the piece that fits squarely and snugly in the base. And once I have that in place, I can remove it so it makes my life a little bit easier and start building upwards. You put the tiny screw in there and then you just start clamping it down. You might notice that it's too wobbly and what happens there is you haven't screwed it in all the way. So just keep going until it is stiff as you want it to be because you don't want your action figure flopping around if you're trying to get a cool pose. Now if you need to repose it, you can always unscrew it a little bit, reposition, and then clamp it back down. But I think for now, that is a good freestanding piece. And next I'm going to take my other dog bone here and do the exact same thing. Got a specific idea, so I'm going to leave this up a little bit just like that. As you see, it doesn't bend too easily, but if I need to move it, it can, and it will just friction fit into place. I just clamp it down a little more, and there we have it locked in solid. Now, this is where things can get a little tricky because we have our two large dog bones right here. What we're gonna wanna do is make the clamp for the waist. And to do that, we need this one final part that will change direction. It kinda looks like a magnifying glass. So I'm going to clamp that in there, and we'll start building this up even more. The nice thing about these in particular is that there's not too many pieces that are repeated or have a lot of different functions to them. In a way, it's like a very forgiving puzzle. And the next piece that we need here is this T. It almost looks like an alien's face, if you ask me. And what you do is you just put it right on top of that peg. There's no screwing it in at all. It just sits there. That's done. The last pieces are these clamps here. And all you need to do is just pick a side, plug it in there, and after that, you put screws on both of these sides, and then you can have a clamp that fits around somebody's waist. There we have our stand, and now it's time to get a figure posed in here so that you can see exactly how one of these things works. Uh, here we have a Star Wars New Republic droid, and we can just clamp him in here, and as you can see, he will now float in outer space. Maybe he's not floating in space, maybe he got blasted by some Imperial forces. 
again, you can kind of tell the story with these things. And now let me reconfigure this just so you can see that it does bend in so many great ways. So here we go. <laughs> he is falling off a cliff or something like that. This is a pose that you normally wouldn't be able to get your action figures in. This is something uniquely for these stands. And if I don't want to have him in some kind of far-flung pose, I can also put him upright. And now he's jumping or reaching for something rather than taking a nosedive. This far in the video and you're still wondering well why would you want an action figure stand <laughs> which uh, you know hats off to you for making it this far just being curious about a subject but the reason that you would want to have an action figure stand like that is if you want to put them in poses that would be nearly impossible with how they're currently balanced see the problem with action figures is that they don't have a sense of balance and the sculpt the accessories, anything like that might throw off that delicate balance and without any other sort of intervention from either like blue tack or like museum wax, there's not too many other options if you don't want all of your figures displayed in a very static, possibly boring pose. And if you like action figures, if you like Nerf, if you like collecting toys, be sure to leave a comment about what your favorite series is and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.